Production support for Hot and Cold is brought to you by American Solar Technics, manufacturers of components for wood burning and solar heating systems. Hey, I'm Tom Gozy. Welcome to Hot and Cold. This week we have the beginning of a really awesome wintertime project that you are going to be extremely interested in because you're going to have to wait through the beginning of the show to find out what it is, but it is definitely worth the wait. It is. this great project I'm talking about? Well, Mr. Man, we're going to put a pellet stove in here at our project house. Why, Tom, you ask, will we put a pellet stove in at the project house? Well, I'll tell you why. Oil is what, $3.40 a gallon? That's why. And we have a great place here for a pellet stove. And we have a relatively tight house. So all these things come together and plus we're going to get the ambiance, all the positive things. One of the things, when you put a pellet stove in a room where you live, this is the living room. This is where the person who lives here spends most of their time. When you put the stove here in the room where you spend all your time, something really interesting happens. The thermostat doesn't kick on for heat. It's warm here, it's say 70 degrees right here. We, this happens to be where in living room you're kind of sedentary, you're watching TV, whatever. Um, the thermostat doesn't come on because this room is warm. The thermostat's over there in the kitchen, not that far away. This first floor is kind of an open floor plan. So the fringes of the house cool down. Something very interesting happens when that happens. When the center, central heat's not coming on, a pellet stove and this is, was true when pellets were more money than oil. Right now pellets are cheaper than oil. But a pellet stove will have the heating bill. Now I can make that statement because so many people have done this and have had reported back to us on the radio. You're going to have your heating bill by having a, and it could be a, it could be a wood stove too. It could be, um, it could be a gas stove. Uh, it could be even an oil stove. They make stoves that burn oil. The fuel source is, is relevant but not completely um, critical, the idea of having a non-central heating system to supplement, to back up the central heating system will allow you to cheat and, and use less energy. What that means, the perimeter of the house is going to be cooler. The upstairs is going to be cooler. The basement is going to be cooler. But we have been in houses in Maine for hundreds of years and have functioned that way with a cook stove, with a stove in other parts of the house, and we've had absolutely no trouble. So a pellet stove is a natural progression in this whole enterprise. What's beautiful about a pellet stove is it uses pellets. We're going to talk a lot about this when we actually put the stove in, but a pellet stove uses pellets. It uses electricity. And we have, this is the wall we're going to put it on. We've got electric outlets. I remember that guy who did all the electric outlets last year, so we've got plenty of power close by. The other thing is we can direct vent right out through this wall. So we're going to pick the spot today to lay out to get all this set up. And we're going to put in a pellet stove from our friends at Evergreen Home Solutions in Ellsworth, a Harman pellet stove. And that will look like a traditional wood stove. It's a beautiful cast iron stove, uh, it, but it works off a thermostat. Now this is a big step forward on pellet stove technology from just a few years ago. We have a thermostat built into the stove. We have a stove that will turn itself on when it calls for heat 
shut itself off when the building gets warm enough. That works, that essentially works just like a central heating system, except it's not central, it's localized. But we could conceivably heat the whole house with that if we wanted to. The heat output of this particular stove will match the heat load of this house before we had done any insulating. So after having done some insulating, we're even going to be in better shape. So that is going to be great fun. But we have to pick a spot and we have to get ready to do this. And there's two things we need to pick. One, we need to pick a spot where we're going out through the wall with the stove pipe because we direct that out through the side wall. We, don't, we can go into a chimney, but we're not in this case. And we also need to have a hearth to set the stove on. So the first thing we'll need to do is determine where on this wall are the studs. We can work around that regardless, but we'll find where the studs are. And then we're going to lay out the hearth. And we want the hearth to intersect with an electrical outlet, if that's possible, and how it plays in the rest of the room. Now, there's a couple of things we need to do. The minimum hearth size for the stove we're getting, which is called an Eccentra, I believe, 25, is about 33 inches by 34 inches. It has to come out about 33 from the wall. So that'd be right to that line there. How convenient to have that crack right there on the floor. And 34 inches is, is about the same, isn't it? So it's not a very big area. I think what we're going to do is we'll maybe go slightly wider and, and just come out whatever the tiles allow us to do. And, and uh, maybe that's three feet, just to give us a little wiggle. The, the thing we're trying to do with a hearth here is if anything falls out of the stove, any glowing embers, we want it to hit a non-combustible surface. We also know that the stove is going to be hot. We don't want that heat going down onto a combustible surface, which in this case is the wood floor. So what we're going to do is um, uh, lay out a cement board as a substrate, and then we'll tile it to match up with what we've done in the rest of the house. And we'll eventually trim it out. We won't right now because we're going to be putting a new floor down over the existing floor sometime in the not too distant future. That's part of the project, but, but uh, what we need to do is figure out the layout here, poke a couple of holes. I don't know if I've got a stud finder. We don't need one. We can poke holes in the wall because we can hide it all, can't we? We may actually put tile up on the wall too. So the other thing we have to play with here is the fact that we have a window that we're going to lose. This window is on the north wall. The, this is the north wall of the house. It's a good place to put the vent out through. It's a good place to have the stove. This window is going away because it's not necessary. We have enough windows on this side of the building. We, we put a new window in on the south side where we're going to gain some sunlight. So we're going to lose this one. And uh, in fact, in the process of doing the installation, we may actually take the, the trim out and sheetrock this. And then we'll finish up the wall from the outside in the spring when we do the take the window out completely, but we want to try to work around this. The other thing, <laughs> I have an ulterior motive. This is cheating, but I know it's cheating, but you have to bear with me. There was a wall here at one time. We just took this wall out last summer. Um, and here are two baseboards that some fine craftsperson has put into place. <laughs> it looks like they had a beaver chew that, that piece, and I think I, I, I just kind of resigned myself to the fact that we were going to take out these baseboards and <laughs> maybe I don't have to. <laughs> if, we, if we put the stove here, I can lose this joint. We can do some tile on the wall, make it look real pretty. And, well, you'll know, but you're not going to tell anybody, are you? You do need to tell them we've got to take a break. Let's take the break. We'll poke some holes around in the wall and, and we're going to lay this sucker out and we're going to know exactly what we're doing. That'd be maybe the first time, but we're going to figure it out. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back. And I couldn't find my stud finder, which is okay. So I drilled two pilot holes, and if I take my long fingers and reach through, there's no stud in the middle. That's where the vents go, <laughs> right there. Close enough to my intersection. If I decide to keep the trim boards, we're okay. And, and I think, let's, for the sake of discussion, take our level. We'll draw a center line here. Now let's put this down on the floor, actually. Make that kind of plumb. 
Okay, that's the line where the center of the vent's going to go. So now we're going to come off either way something around four feet. Now what we have is this is the underlayment we're going to use, the cement board. We're going to screw this down to the floor like we did in the kitchen last year. And then we can take our tile, and this is the tile we use in the kitchen, which is slight. I think we may use the slate. I'm not sure because it's a little less flat than a regular tile would be, but we'll, we'll make that decision between now and next week. Um, and we'll put the slate down. And we're going to go, the, the, I want to use a 12 inch, I think I want to use a 12 inch square tile. <sighs> so what we could do is we could in theory go three foot by three foot. The underlayment is three foot by five foot. So. Here's, here's a decision I am making right now. We're coming out three feet, okay? Three feet is out to here. Right there. Let's go over here three feet and make sure that we're in the same, because I, I don't want to trust that this floor is anything near square, although it's not too far off apparently. And we'll mark this as such. So I like, uh, I like situations where we can mark things up because I'm going to cover that. So we're going this way now. And these should intersect and be more or less perpendicular. Let's mark to here and see if that angle is perpendicular. Yes, it is. Oh, boy. Do I know what I'm doing? I don't think so, but I sure make believe I do on TV. And we're going to come back this way. So if we go, if we went three foot by three foot, we actually want to go a little stronger than that. So if we allowed for, a, say, a quarter inch grout line and we're three foot across, we'd probably have to be, let's say, 18 and a half inches, which would be right here. What we want to do is, is just lay this out on the floor and see if we want to make any changes to the layout because it's going to be in the way or it's going to be too big or too small or any of the above. So let's get this here. Um, all right. So that's one end. And then if we go back this way, that was 18 and a half, right? Actually, it's 19. I'm such a good marker here. We'll go 19 this way, right to here. We'll take our square. We'll mark this way as well. Now, we might wind up jazzing this up a little bit in that we may clip the edge of this and not have it be square into the room. Maybe it would put it at a little bit of a diagonal to, um, there we go. Okay, so our hearth now is not very big, really. Just mark this side again. It's going here, out to here, and over to here and back again. We're not giving up too much real estate. We're close to the electric outlet so we can plug in the stove. We've got a hole for the vent. Now, a couple of things about vents that I didn't talk about before, but let's talk about now. The, the, it, you, if you're looking at a specific stove, you got to either talk to somebody who knows about that stove or get a copy of the manual. Most manufacturers, you can download the manuals online. Harman is one of those manufacturers, you can go online and you can look at what, um, um, what parameters you have to work with in terms of situating the stove. Now, we're, we're in pretty good shape here. Rule of thumb, and this is quick and dirty, but it seems to fit for most stoves. If I say the, this is three feet, here's the vent here. I want to have a three foot radius around that vent where I'm not intersecting with a window or a door or the corner of a building. 
Um, I'm intersecting with this window, but this window is going away, so that's not an issue. And the idea, of course, is that we are going to put combustion products out of the stove. There's going to be um, carbon dioxide, water, and some smell associated with burning wood. Even though it's wood pellets, you still smell kind of like burning wood at times. Um, so uh, quick and dirty, I want about a three foot radius. It's probably less than that. If you look at the manufacturer's guidelines, a lot of these clearances are maybe only a foot. Three feet, if we can meet three feet, we're in pretty good shape. We could probably have a window up overhead because it will dissipate usually away from the house. But again, you need to look at the stove manufacturer's guidelines. This needs to be about a foot off of the ground where the foundation is over a foot off the ground and then we're going to be probably another eight or nine, ten inches off the ground from the uh, bottom of the floor. So we're probably going to wind up about two, two and a half feet off of grade when we put this in. Reason for that is we don't want to be too close to the ground because snow will get into it. Um, we might have weeds growing up, flowers, plants growing up. We don't want that stuff happening. We don't want things getting into the vent. The vent is removing the combustion byproducts out of the house. If that gets blocked, either it's not going to work right or it's going to fill the house with smoke. Both are not desirable situations. So we need to deal with that properly. Again, we need to look at the stove guidelines to see where this has to be in relation to everything else that would let air into the house and that's pretty easy. So we picked our spot, we've laid out our, our floor plan so to speak. So the next thing to do now is uh, next week have a little bit of materials. We don't need a whole heck of a lot to put this hearth in and then the following week we'll get the guys here from Evergreen Home Solutions in Ellsworth and with the Harman stove and we will see how long it takes us to actually do the installation and I can tell you from having done this before it's going to be a half hour TV show for us to do this entire thing especially with the nice new hearth here so we won't have to Yo, oh, by the way um, we've got to take a break but before we do if you don't have a hearth they do sell a you can either get a metal hearth pad sometimes they have some um, tile on them to set down right on the floor or Harman also makes a metal um, base that you can set the stove on so that's available I'm sure other manufacturers do too so and, and similar type things for wood stoves bigger clearances are involved than with pellet stoves usually we got to take a quick break here we still have time to go noodle around and look at some other projects maybe or maybe we well, let me get this figured out we'll be right back Hey, we're back, and you're, you're watching the taping of the taping. We're taping while we're tape. I'm taping. That's a TV pun. You have to be a videographer to appreciate that, don't you? Just figured I'd throw some tape over the holes here. No cold air coming in, but we don't want to start. Um, as I said before, we had a wall here at one time. This, I believe, initially was one big... Well, it may have been one big living room. I'm not sure. See, right here, see how this is all in, in, fit in? You know, there's, uh, this is some red pine that is inlaid in between the, uh, the maple flooring. So I have a feeling there might have been like a fireplace here or maybe there was a closet or something. I have a feeling it was a fireplace or a chimney base. Uh, and, and that got changed years ago. And then somebody built a new wall here from here. Um, the way this building is laid out, this wall was not a bearing wall. Apparently the wall that, this older wall was not a bearing wall. We have floor joists that span from one wall to the other. We have a 15 foot span across here. Where this wall was is a 2 by 4 which I haven't taken out yet because there's lath up above that because there was a plaster ceiling. This has been sheetrocked. I suspect this may have been sheetrock, but right now we've got the nice um, uh, paper cellulosic um, ceiling tile on top of strapping. Uh, this is down lower than this side. It's down maybe an inch and a half, so, and this is up. This has sand paint on it. So as a home improvement person, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, 
What are we going to do with these ceilings? I don't like the sand paint. It, it was put on there to hide a lot of sins. Uh, a not very good drywall job. Um, we could take it down or we could sheetrock over it. I don't like doing sheetrock overhead because I, if I've learned anything, I know what I don't like to do. <laughs> I don't like to do sheetrock overhead. I don't mind it on the walls. I don't like it on the ceiling. So I've been chewing on this for about a year and I've come to a, a management decision. And here's the plan. The widest area we have here is 15 feet. We can get edge and center bead pine that's 16 feet. So we could get pine like we did in the kitchen and we could take, we're going to have to take down this ceiling tiles uh, and we may want, we're going to have to strap the ceiling because the ceiling joists are going this way and we want to run our pine this way so we'll have to strap it this way which is not a big exercise. Screw it into the structure and then we could just start chopping pieces of edge and center bead pine and putting them in one at a time and go all the way across make the whole ceiling look uniform. Um, we're going to spend maybe 70 cents, 80 cents a square foot to do this but as soon as that wood is up on the ceiling it looks nice and then we put a coat of urethane on it and we walk away from it. We don't have to tape it we don't have to paint it. Uh, we will put some urethane on, which is not a big deal. We don't have floors to mess up here yet. So I think that's a project that we'll do. And this is such a small house. It's kind of like, it, it is a Cape Cod style house, but it's kind of like a cottage. So the, the wood on the ceiling, I think, will work well. I, every time I've done this, I've been very happy. As long as you don't overwhelm yourself with too much wood. If we had wood on the walls, I think wood on the ceiling, wood on the floors would be, be way too much. So if we, if we kind of mix it down a bit, keep, we're going to keep the, the walls the way they are. We're just going to paint them to some color that looks a little bit better. Um, we'll probably trim out the... We may trim out the windows and doors with natural wood trim as opposed to white trim, but that will, I think, blend well and, and get us back to a, a nice clean look and, uh, and we're gaining on this. So these are, you know, the, the kind of projects we want to do through the winter. Not terribly expensive. I think we have about 300 square feet. So we may be into this as much as $400. But, I mean, you know, look what we're looking at right now. This is kind of ugly. This is ugly by itself. This is ugly by itself. The two together look awful. So, <laughs> so if we, a little bit of messing around, we're gonna have to make a little bit of a mess to take down this ceiling and, and get some strapping up. But as soon as we start to put some strapping here, we can get wood, we can do it out of pocket. We could do a little bit at a time if we want to. So that's a, a good, easy project. And it literally, it's a two to three person project to put the, put the wood up on the ceiling. But two or three people, one of which has to be skilled in using a hammer, the other two just have to be holders to hold the boards up, because that's what we did in the kitchen. Uh, we can knock this out in an afternoon and be impressed with our workmanship when we were done and not have to know a lot. So that's what we're going to do. And maybe we'll get a crew in here and get it. This one will actually do when uh, you get to see some of it. So that would be good fun, wouldn't it? That's a good TV show. Boy, we got some good ones coming up here now. And uh, again, uh, check out Evergreen Home Solutions on the Bar Harbor Road in Ellsworth. They are everybody there I've known for years, more years than I want to admit to. They all have been in the wood hearth business for a long time. So they know stoves, whether you're looking for gas, whether you're looking for wood or wood pellets, they're, pe they're the people to talk to. There's going to be something here fairly soon. And next week, we'll do the hearth, and then we make the magic, and we start saving 50% on the heating bills in this nice little house, which isn't heating for much anyway. But we're going to have that, and we're going to have the ambiance of a wood fire right here in the room with us. Oh, and we don't need a chimney. It, life is good. we got to go. Production support for Hot and Cold is brought to you by American Solar Technics, manufacturers of components for wood burning and solar heating systems.